From the day we're born, many of us are taught about the primary colors. Three iconic hues which, when mixed together, can give us any other color in the rainbow. Except, they can't. No matter how much you mix these colors together, you can't make magenta. You cannot make cyan. You can't even make a decent orange or green. And that's because these aren't the real primaries, at least as far as painters are concerned. So what are the real primary colors? Well, there are actually multiple sets of primaries. But as a painter, the real primaries, or at least the primaries that matter, have been right under your nose all along. And if you own a color printer, or if you're just a print media nerd like me, you might already know exactly what I'm talking about. Magenta. Yellow. Cyan. These are the real primaries the three most vibrant points of origin through which we can create any hue imaginable. Add black and white, and we can create any color imaginable. And this isn't just theory. Once you learn to recognize these colors, you'll be able to harness their power and feel much more in control of the colors you're putting onto your miniatures. You can visualize the relationship of these three primaries as a color wheel, but as a painter, I find it much easier to break them down into three separate gradients. This is probably the best known application of CMYK color in the miniature painting space. Several videos from Brent, Casey, and others have addressed the fact that pink somehow makes the best undercoat for painting yellow. And the real reason for this is because most of these painters aren't actually using pink, they're using magenta. And by mixing together yellow and magenta, these two primaries, we are actually gaining access to a whole spectrum of vibrancy. Let's start by painting this ogre yellow. As I'm doing with every color in this video, I'm using mostly contrast paints and inks, and I'm thinning them down with a little bit of glaze medium to create what I call a super glaze. This is just a very thin paint and it makes it really easy to see how the colors layer on top of each other. As you can see, when I add just a little bit of magenta, it starts to look a bit orange. The more magenta we add, the more orange our color is going to look, to the point where we will eventually hit a reddish tone. Personally, my eyes don't draw a huge difference between orange and red, and I see both as just being points on the yellow magenta spectrum. And as a miniature painter, I think this can be a useful way to think about color. Instead of separating color in your brain into the categories of yellow, orange, red, and pink, I think it's actually much more helpful to think about all of these tones being shades on the magenta yellow spectrum. Now, let's try the opposite. When I start with magenta and then add successive shades of yellow, we basically get the same effect, and you can see how the magenta gives way to oranges, reds, and pure yellows at the lightest points. The space between yellow and cyan, which a lot of people would tell you is called green, is a wonderful place. Similar to how all shades of orange and red, as you like to call it, are contained within the magenta yellow spectrum, all shades of green are contained within the cyan yellow spectrum. Here's a turtle that I want to give some nice green, reptile-like skin. I start by giving them a nice yellow base coat and letting it dry. Now let's apply some cyan to the range. Immediately, you can see the massive range of colors that we get from just mixing these two together. You can get anything from a lime green to a forest green to a turquoise. It's really quite vibrant, and the same thing happens when we start with a cyan and move towards yellow, and you can see the full range on this rabbit. Now this range should be very familiar to you if you've seen uh, any of my videos <laughs> because I use this in basically all of my big armies and paint schemes. This range contains every blue, purple, and indigo you can imagine, and you can see it quickly and easily in action when I apply the cyan over this magenta. All of the cyan immediately transforms into blue, losing any of the green tones it might have contained within it, and we get hints of purple as well. These colors work really well together, and you can use them to create all kinds of fun effects. And now that you know the three gradients, let's see what we can actually do with these concepts in 
real life. Real life. Much like the color wheel you might be familiar with, each color has its opposite. And it's just right across from it on the color wheel. Contrasting color is just the opposite color that helps bring out the best qualities in each of the colors. Take this cyan armor, for example. Its opposite color on the color wheel would be right in the middle of the yellow magenta range, which roughly equates to an orange tone. But we don't have to be so restrictive with it, and pretty much the entire opposite range will work as a contrasting color to its opposite, although it does help to keep it relatively in the middle. To break it down further, cyan's contrasting color is the middle of the yellow magenta range, Magenta's contrasting color is the middle of the cyan yellow range, and yellow's contrasting color is the middle of the cyan magenta range. Basically, the contrasting color is just the other two primaries mushed together. Your mileage may vary, but I found this to be mm, mostly true. As you might know, I spent the last two months severely injured and unable to do any complex things like airbrushing or 3D printing. So Broken Anvil, a small team of artists based out of the Seattle area, decided to send me this wonderful care package full of fantastic miniatures, all packaged really carefully and so, so they're, each in their little, they're each in their own little bag. It's really extremely cute. And I feel like this care package um, really exemplifies the attitude of this whole company. There are a lot of 3D printing Patreons out there that give you new miniatures every month, and a lot of them are really good. I try to only feature the ones I really like on this YouTube channel. But Broken Anvil, I feel like, has a really unique feel to it, and I think if you look at their miniatures, you're gonna get what I mean immediately. I am just in love with this company and their whole aesthetic. I don't currently play Dungeons and Dragons, but having all of the miniatures from Broken Anvil kinda makes me want to again. This month they have an amazing bundle full of rabbit folk, turtle folk, wolf folk, witch folk, ogre folk, and a lot of other folks that you might be familiar with. As you'd expect, all of their models are extremely high quality, easy to paint, and come pre-supported. So if you like the models you're seeing in this video, I would encourage you to go and check out Broken Anvil's Patreon. The link is down in the description. Check it out. I think they're definitely one of the more unique Patreons out there. Another great way to use contrasting colors is to add some natural shadows to our miniatures. Let's say we want to add some shading to this ogre's cyan colored armor. All we have to do is mix up a roughly equal mix of yellow and magenta, and when we apply it on top of the blade in selective places, it gives us some really vibrant, natural looking shadows. You might also notice that it's a much darker color than the one we had on our palette. This is because when all of our primaries are mixed together in a theoretically perfect mix, it should create black, theoretically. It's hard to do it in real life, but in theory, if you put them all together, you create black. In real life, it's extremely hard to make this happen, but the closer we come to that perfectly equal mix, the darker our color becomes. So in this case, applying a mix of yellow and magenta on top of cyan results in a darker shade of reddish orange for this reason. It's a quick and easy way to create more vibrant colors for your shadows, and it should work for the opposite colors of every other hue as well. Just draw the line across from this color to the other color on the color wheel, and you'll find the one you're looking for. And there's one thing we just have not addressed yet, and that is... What is the... what does the K stand for? in CMYK. Is there a secret fourth primary color that I've been holding back from you? The secret fourth primary is black and or white. And as for why K stands for that, I don't know. And well, technically, if you add all your primaries together, you will get a naturally darker color. Sometimes it's easier to just 
use some black templar contrast paint and just add a little bit of black to the mix. But if a CMYK printer does that, then why shouldn't we? Well, C, M, and Y allow you to create any hue imaginable. K represents your ability to shift the saturation of these hues to create truly limitless colors. And while technically, if you add all three primaries together, it will create a naturally darker color, there are some instances where it just makes more sense to add black to darken a color as a shortcut. For example, let's take a look at what happens when we add a drop of black to our existing magenta yellow mixture from before. It gives us a nice warm reddish brown, which we can use to paint all of the cloth parts on our ogre. We can also use the same color to add shading to the skin and shading to the armor if we like. I find using a single shade color can go a long, long way towards unifying a figure's entire look. Here you can see how our ogre looks after we shade everything with our dark red mix. It's nice, but a bit plain looking. Here's a few ways to add some variety to this mix. One of my favorite uses for the primaries is to color shift a model. By adding just a very small amount of a primary or a um, mix of two primaries, on top of another color, you can just slightly shift it in another direction. And it's gonna help it really stand out from all the other colors around it. For example, here you can see I'm adding just a little bit of yellow to these ropes to help them stand out from the other cloth and rope stuff. It's a subtle change, but I think it really helps add some variety to the sameness of the model. We can do the same thing by adding a little bit of cyan to the cloth parts shifting them into a slightly violet range. This, in my opinion, is the true power of the primaries for your day-to-day -day painting. Even if you paint miniatures in a really traditional black primer and then just layer up the colors till you get brighter and brighter colors, you can still use these techniques. It's an easy way to blend and add variety to your models without applying a totally new color. This works great for OSL effects as well. In addition to this, we can also use straight up black to darken some areas like I'm doing here with the hair on top of the ogre's head. Glazing on bits of black very selectively can be nice because it retains the color underneath, just acting as a little darkening filter to add shadows or depth to certain areas. Much like black, we can use white to desaturate our colors, but just in the opposite direction, making them lighter. We can either mix these lighter colors together on our palette and then use a layering technique to build up highlights, or we can just apply the white, or in my case, pale sand, directly onto the model, adding white highlights, and then glaze on other colors on top of that to add our highlights. For example, in this case, I thought our ogre's face could use a few highlights. So I took my bottle of pale sand and painted on a few highlights in the most raised portions of the face. I then glazed on a bit of magenta to tint all these highlights into a slightly magenta tone. I like this method a lot when blending things like skin because instead of just getting a single color, the magenta interacts with all the colors to modify both the whites and the other colors around it. It helps blend everything together in a really natural way without having to do any complicated things like uh, wet blending. After this, I then applied a very thin yellow glaze on top of this face to modify it even further, adding layers of complexity to the paint job while still having our highlights visible underneath. Finally, I took my pale sand and re-highlighted just the most raised surfaces on the model, parts that would catch the light the most, and then I didn't glaze any color on top of that, making those our highest highlights. I would really encourage you to try out this method of painting for yourself as just an educational learning exercise because I promise you're going to learn a heck of a lot if you try it for yourself. The more I use these primary colors, the more that I feel like I learn and grow as a person and as an artiste. Of course, I don't only paint with these three colors now, that would be ridiculous and it takes way too long, but when I look at all the colors on my little painting shelf there, I think of them all now as more like saved states or like a saved game on a color wheel rather than being their own separate thing, right? Like if I wanted to, I could mix up any of these colors using primaries and black and pale sand. Anyway, there are just a million applications for this knowledge and I would encourage you to experiment with this. I hope this knowledge has helped you out a little bit. Before we go, I would like to extend a huge thank you to Broken Anvil Miniatures for just being really patient with me and sending me all of these wonderful miniatures and sponsoring this video. 
I've been a big fan of your company for a while now, and I'm glad that we can finally collaborate like this. So if you, the viewer, would like to check out some cool miniatures, I highly recommend Broken Anvil Miniatures. They have a deep catalog of stuff on My Mini Factory if you're looking for any of their old stuff. They've got a lot of really cool stuff for a variety of different game systems. Uh, but they're paying me right now to promote their Patreon. So go and check out <laughs> patreon.com slash broken anvil, I think it is, or check out the link in the description. I would also like to thank all of my generous patrons for supporting me through my recent injury. Um, a lot of people ended up donating over the past two months that didn't usually, and uh, I just really appreciate it because I was able to take basically a sick leave off work to allow my hand to heal, and now I can use it properly again. There's a cool scar now, but I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there it is. Anyway, just thank you so much if you're a subscriber to my Patreon, if you're on my Discord community. I've just really appreciated that community over the past two months. Um, it's really been keeping me going. <laughs> and today I would especially like to thank Channing S. Ugswala, Stice, Bree Reed, Dan Willman, Daryl Hutchinson, Jane Aust, a long way west and everyone loves robots thank you so much to all of you you are the real heroes keeping this channel running and keeping me fed and keeping me living in my nice home uh, so I really appreciate it and thank you for watching this video um, hope you learned something and I will see you in October